Welcome back to the 44th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one we're going to talk a bit more about the classes and how we're using them as views in our project as opposed to the perhaps uh, easier to understand function based views. So I'm going to use the existing project that we have and specifically how we're rendering the home template at the moment to sort of go a bit more in depth into sort of how the class views are working sort of internally in the Django source code. So let's talk about that now. So here you can see I'm on my home page and I'm just going to finish off a couple of things just before we get started on that. So in the last video I noticed I defined this uh, template for this home uh, for this home page but the text isn't actually showing up and the reason for that is because in our base.html we have the block body which has a base header and we actually need to replace that so I'm just going to add the block here so block body and I'm just going to do end block just so I don't forget I always write the block and the end block together just so that I always remember to do them and then I'm just going to define what I want to inside here so I can say uh, let's say h1 uh, home and then that should show up instead of base so that's how you'd sort of make that template show up in case you're a bit confused because I defined the the header in the last one that didn't show up I just had to add that block body in there so I, I just move it over as well whilst I'm doing this so I'll do a div uh, with a container so it's just a bootstrap class and I'll put this div on the other side so just like that and now that should be all we need to do to be able to get that to look, look a little bit nice and line up with all the rest so now that we've got this I want to talk about the view that powers this page so if we go to our views we have a very simple class based view and this inherits from the template view itself which is built into Django and the template view actually inherits from a view class which is an intentionally simple class that I'm, I'm actually going to show you and talk a bit about how that works. Let's just go ahead and look at that then. So I'm in the Django source code on GitHub and I thought I, th I should show you this to give you a little bit of insight into how the class views actually work uh, on a little bit more of a fundamental level rather than me just sort of showing you how it's created because I think it's really helpful to sort of have the knowledge of how uh, your Django web server is going to handle these web requests in the sort of uh, standard web uh, request response cycle so what I'm going to do is just scroll down so I'm in Django views generic and then looking at the base.py in the uh, main Django repositories master branch here and it's got a class called view as I alluded to earlier and what this has is a method in it called as view so if we go to our URLs a minute we can see that we're saying home view which is the class that we define which inherits from template view which inherits from this view class and I'm doing dot as view so this is clearly the method that we've inherited in our home view because remember in our home view we haven't actually got any methods here so it must have been inherited from either template view or a superclass of template view so in this case it was a superclass of template view and that class is called view so if you're if you're not familiar with Python object oriented in inheritance and that sort of thing, uh, this is certainly going to clarify that for you uh, if you sort of have any gaps in your knowledge. But basically, it inherits from view, which has the as view method, and this as view method is really where the Django web server is going to start to handle the request that it gets from the client. So for example, it could be me re refreshing this web page in Chrome and that sends a get request to the home URL using the HTTP protocol and uh, the status is 200 which means okay it worked so this is the sort of beginning of this process it says go and get me this web page and it loads it in the web browser so that would be the response the actual loading of the web page so how it handles that is actually uh, through this view and calling the asView method so the asView method then goes through and it returns a view now the reason that it returns a view is actually quite important because 
With the function based views, we just did something like views.home if we had a home function based view defined, and then that would just work just natively as a function based view. But the reason that we need this as view method is because the URL resolver, so this URL uh, thing that is making our list here, our URL patterns list, uh, it needs a function to be passed in. That's what it expects. It doesn't expect a class to be passed in. So what the add view method does is it pretty much takes your class and makes it into a function that the URL resolver, the this the URL thing that we imported from Django Conf URLs, that it can understand. So as opposed to a class, which it won't understand, it'll just get confused if you say home view on its own, the as view method actually goes through and returns a function. So that that way the URL uh, can actually understand uh, because it is a function rather than a class itself. So if we scroll down a little bit more, we see uh, so it returns a function instead of the actual class itself, which is good. And it's also got some other methods which I might get to in a minute. But if I keep scrolling down, we pretty much get to the template view. Now the template view is what we've inherited from in our views. So our home view inherits from template view. And when I defined this, you might have thought it was a bit of Django magic, sort of being able to just render this template as opposed to us having to actually go in and say, uh, you know, from Django.shortcuts import render and then uh, render a HTTP response of some sort, uh, or the actual template itself. But instead we just defined an attribute on this class and it did it all for us. And the reason for that is if we look at the template view which we're inheriting from itself, this is the source code for it in Django, and it's actually got this get method on the class already. And all this does is it just renders the template. So the get method is special because uh, the name of the method being get, it actually gets rooted the get requests. So if I were to override that and I were to say def get, self and it takes request as well then anything that I do here would be in response to any get requests uh, that the client may request so any time that I browse a web page uh, so that's a syntax error because I've just I've just broken it uh, if I say pass here it should go back to working uh, at least to some extent um, Okay, so now I've just completely broken it. So if I get rid of this a minute, you can see that any page that I go to uh, on the website is calling with get requests. And if I define the method get, then all those requests are going to be routed uh, to that get method as long as it is a get request. Now, somewhere where you wouldn't use the get request is if you were submitting a form, for example. Instead, you'd use the post request, and it would be a different type of request showing up in your Django server, as well as it would be directing it to a different method in the view itself. So, for example, you'd say def post instead of uh, what we previously did, which was def get. So I'm going to be using them in future videos to extend these sort of view classes and that's sort of really how it sort of works fundamentally. And the way that it in fact routes the, the actual request from the client to the uh, get or post method is not just magic. If you look at the source code again, you can actually see that the, uh, so where does it do it? The dispatch method so this is again in the main view class, which is what everything stems from essentially. The dispatch method is where the request sort of initially goes before it then gets routed to uh, anywhere else. So the dispatch method decides which protocol the request is. So request.method, uh, I don't know if it says here, so request.method is actually where it pulls out the a uh, type of request that it's just received and sort of analyzes it so that it can send it off to the correct corresponding method on whichever view class that it happens to correspond to. So if it's a, if it's a post request then uh, let's say we have def post here, I'm not going to define the whole thing because 
it's just for demonstrational purposes, but if we have def post and someone submits a form on our website which corresponds with this view, then that request will go through the dispatch method and then at that point it will decide, okay, it's post request, therefore on whatever corresponding view class it is, it needs to go to the post method on that class. So if you want to read more about it, you can just read more of the source code. It's very well commented and documented and all that sort of stuff. Or the Django docs is also a good place. But I thought I should clarify that because it helps sort of give you a more lower level understanding of how the web server actually works in handling those requests from the clients and therefore being able to handle the responses more effectively. So I'm just going to get rid of what we've done for now in terms of the addition to the view because that was just sort of a little demonstration. but. I hope that sort of clarified a little bit on your knowledge of the class-based views and in the next couple of videos we might actually sort of define a bit more of these class-based views more in depth, maybe write a few methods on them and give them more functionality just to be able to progress with our actual homepage itself. Maybe with a get, maybe with a post, maybe with some other stuff as well, uh, just to sort of make our homepage more like what we want as opposed to just a blank template which it currently is.